So um, I, I am convening the Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, here on February 27th at 5 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required. Public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extend the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAP. Remote meeting connection is noted in the agenda. Uh, the meeting ID is 620-007-8930, passcode 627-371. The dial-in meeting is 301-715-8592. Meeting attendees should uh, mute their phones, star six, unless speaking um, or unless asking a question or commenting. Um, all right, so uh, what we wanted to do today was convene, um, I believe uh, Skip has our minutes. Uh, so we'll probably have to do the minutes for this meeting at the next one. Um, and then, yeah, the next thing that we wanted to uh, talk about was the capital projects with uh, Kevin Scarborough. Um, Kevin stepped away for a second, so just wait until he gets back. I'm sorry, I was on the from finishing up another uh, DPH thing. So I apologize. It was back to back meetings. Well, you're right on time. Thank you for joining. <laughs> um, thank you, you for accommodating our time. Oh, you're welcome. So it sounds like Kevin might be making some copies. We'll just give him a second here. Do we need an official role or? You might just want to make sure that everybody says they're here for purposes okay. of the remote meeting um, limitations. Okay. Uh, Mark's all by himself? I am. Mark's so. all by oh himself. God. Well, I'm here and so is Kevin. All right. All right. And then who else do we have remotely? Um, Carolyn. And it looks like Denise and Chuck. Denise Chuck, and Chuck is Chuck. remote. Yep. Yep, Chuck remote. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, what we would like to do uh, is just kind of go through um, all of the different capital requests through um, all the departments. And um, we have uh, Kevin Scarborough here to talk about um, stuff for the uh, the highway department, so um, highway public works. So um, yeah, Kevin, do you want to run us through your requests? Sure, I'd absolutely love to. Um, bear with me. Here's what what we second. have on our list here is uh, sander dump body replacement, the, the North Main Street sidewalk engineering, and I think we also have some uh, just future plans that we wanted to, just to discuss off of your 15, is it a 15 year plan for uh, actually it's a, yeah, it's probably about 15 years left. Yeah. Cause we, we put together a 32 year plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, your 32 year plan then. Yeah. Um, okay. So what I, what I, what I have in front of me is I have the replacement, uh, truck 10 replacement sander. Yep. I have the, uh, Freightliner dump truck replacement of dump truck 04. Okay. Okay. That was that was that was already approved. Right. Yeah. It, it just we, needs to. We it was, it was basically for. Uh, um, I need to go through the motions, make sure I you know, dot my eyes, cross my t's, push it through. As is, um, we've already put a letter of uh, intent on this, and that basically saves us almost fifty thousand uh, dollars. For for which? For for the dump truck. Oh, the dump. Okay. Yeah. And then I have replacement of truck number twelve. And then I have a replacement of the John Deere 544. Do we, and sorry to interrupt you, do, sure. do we have um, a copy of that? You guys should have everything. Do we? Okay. Um, Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, sure, no problem. they were all turned in at the same time so do, do we um i don't think the freight liner was in the our new packet 
Yeah, the new packet, we have just the, the sander dump body replacement in the North Main Street sidewalk engineering. Okay. Um, Casey, would you happen to have an electronic copy of the 20 or the 32 year plan? Um, I don't have an electronic copy of that. Okay. But I thought I didn't give you the Freightliner request that we got in December. Well, no, we had that earlier because we voted that already. We voted that last year as a preliminary. Right. Um, or or we voted because there's so much savings involved, we voted to approve it. Um, Do you need me to send that out? I think we should probably have it again. Um, do you know what date was the approval of our meeting? We should. I can go back and look. Because we have to remember, we have to prioritize all this stuff. Right. So we want to make sure that this is, we have this paperwork for this and says that, say that we have already pre approved it. So obviously that's number one on our priority list. Yep. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure was that we had um the uh next five years of the 32 year plan just so we can have it on our spreadsheet um so you know even if we're not going to vote on those now I, I at least want to have like the anticipated fy 2025 through at least 2028 if possible just so we know like what what's coming right it's somewhere i know i've seen it so Casey yeah, must I, have it somewhere. I'm trying to find it right now. Um because I, I think we either had it last year or the year before. I think I might have zeroed in on it. Which one? The um the highway. I think California. it was in your packet, but I'm checking. Okay. Give me a second. I thought I included all of it, but I'm going to, my search won't let me find it in the Adobe document. So, all right, so I'm give sorry, me a couple of minutes and I'll. You looking for? I'm trying to find a, an electronic copy of the, basically what you kind of gave me here, which I, I have had okay. in the past. Right. I just, so, uh, so what I can do is I can take these four documents real quick and rip them through the thing and send them to her. Sure. Yeah, that'll right. work. Thank you. Then if you want, when you look at that list yep. that you have in front of you, the second to the right, that's the replacement year. Yep. The very far right is, is the estimated costs. And obviously then the explanation of what each of the equipment is on, is on the left-hand side. Um, the only thing I do want to bring up real quick is, is because the 544 loader, uh, we've already pushed that two years. So, okay. Um, cause that that was due two years ago. So I just want to make sure that that stays up on the, on the list. Got it. So the Freightliner was in your packet, the um, revised capital packet. I can resend this electronically. The information that Kevin has, the the whole compiled thing he has, I didn't have that electronically. Um, but the Freightliner that we had talked about last year, he refreshed that. So it is in the packet. Oh, oh, oh perfect. I'm, I may have Do just- Do you want me to reprint this for everybody? Um, yeah, it's not yeah. necessary for right now, but yeah, it might not be a bad idea. Okay. And then, yeah, um, I just found it in my packet. Yeah, I, I could actually just print it out and add it to mine. I think it's just one. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind, Casey. I don't, I, I, I don't know that we need to do that unless anyone else needs it. No. I, I have it electronically. So I just scanned this in. I'm going to step away from my desk for a second, Mark. Okay. Hey, Casey, don't kill me. I had to send that to you upside down because there was so many staples. Oh, never mind. There was so many staples in it that 
I had to give it, send it to you upside down. Otherwise, it wouldn't have fed. Okay. So sorry about that. I was supposed to remind on. Casey to start the recording. I don't know if she did. Uh oh. She did. Yes. Oh, she did. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I was looking at my papers. Yeah, no, you recorded. And then I'm sorry, what were the ones, the other ones that you said besides vehicle that you have? Okay. Mark, I'm sorry, besides the equipment, what else did you have on there? I'm sorry. Um, the, equipment was the, the equipment was the, the, the big thing. Sure. Um, and then I think we also had the North Main Street sidewalk engineering. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. I don't have that in front of me, but yes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so if I could turn the uh, committee's attention to, uh, there was an email that I sent, I BCC'd everyone that has the uh, projected highway capital replacement expenses. Uh, I just scanned that into a PDF and sent it. Hopefully it went out. Just going to check my sent box to make sure that it, it actually went out. Oh, I can't attach it. Uh, interesting. Hey, Casey, I'm not sure. I believe I there was another email or another scan I sent to you previous to that. And it should be one, two, three, four. Okay, let me check. Five pages. Um, that will only come up if we talk about doing a capital stabilization for okay. highway. Equipment. So it was your projected highway capital replacement expense? Yes, that one, if if we could send that out to everyone, for some reason I can't send that. It okay. Might, my copy might be <clears throat> too large or something to send. All right, I'll send that out now. Oh, thank you. And um, which one was the one that we deferred two years in a row? Was it the John the John Deere loader? Correct. Loader. Okay. Yep. So I guess we could start with that. Um, what is the uh, main use for the John Deere loader? Uh, main use for the John Deere loader is um, storm cleanup. Um, anytime we're loading our trucks, the um, standard road work. Um, I mean, the loader is used on a daily basis. And what this does is this actually replaces the one that's at the transfer station because the one that is presently now, the newer one, the Caterpillar that we have or utilizing, then goes to the transfer station and the new one goes to the highway. That way we continually have um, a, a backup, which is good because the Caterpillar died on this last storm and we were able to go ahead and grab the John Deere and finish the storm off. Um, and that's the thought process behind having the two loaders. We've always had two loaders ever since I've been here. So the, um, the Caterpillar is the the one that's not used at the transfer station? Correct. That is the one we use presently right now as our main main okay. unit. So that's the main unit. So it's, and basically what we do is, is we we take the main unit and do a step down and it goes to the transfer station. Because yep. it's, it's, it's utilized there at the transfer station for pushing back, for plowing, for when we have issues on that end of town. So that way we don't have to bring the... Um, loader from here over there, we're just trying to save time, save wear and tear on the equipment type things. Okay. Um, so that one I see here, the estimate uh, is 255K. Is that an updated estimate? Um, that is actually that right there is up a little bit. Um, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty close. I would go with the 255. I do have 235 here, um, but this is months old. This okay. is six months old. Um, and I know every time that you turn around, there's another $20,000 tacked on to something. 
Um, because like hypothetically, if like if for some reason we go ahead and and go for the dump truck and the dump truck replacement is 325, say we don't have say say I wanted a new one as of July 1st, it's now 375. Um, that's how much it's gone up. It's it's the, the prices of things are going absolutely insane. So right. just to give you an idea. Um, so 255 is the request. And obviously, if, if we don't, if it's not all utilized, then it goes back. Um, and it's for a new cat uh, 930M wheeled loader. Oh, that's what would be replacing the John Deere? That's correct. So that would be the, the new model would be a, what was the? Uh, it's 930M wheel loader. That should be part of the, the packet that you have or was sent to you because okay. there's a, uh, a breakdown of exactly what it is. But again, this budget number, this quote was November, of 20, uh, November almost December. So you're talking in three months, a lot of exchange in three months. Right. Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to um, share my screen with everyone here just so everyone can kind of see this. Um, the existing loader, the one we're talking about replacing, the, the John Deere, um, we did do some work to it a few years ago, um, but now it's time. It's if, if we don't, then we're going to be spending probably at least to bring it back up to a good working shape again, I'll throw at least another 30 grand at it. Pistons got to be replaced. Uh, transmission's got to come out. Um, it's, it's time. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions about the, uh, the John Deere replacement? No, uh, I just, um, I'm back on the freight liner though, that 325, is that what we, we voted for that is correct line yes. four that's correct, correct? okay correct. so we have that already 325 and then so this is 255 at least you think that's at least i i would say 255 is a, is a good safe number okay All i right. wouldn't expect that to go any higher because like i said I, we bumped it we bumped it 20 grand um from the uh, uh, the budget quote, you know, and again, that can change. Yeah. So. Okay. So we've got the the John Deere. We've got the Freightliner. That's the Freightliner is the one I think we already approved, right? Right. That's the one we've improved okay. for three twenty five, and we got in line for that at three twenty five. Yep. Correct. Correct. And if and if you get out of line. And then try and get back in line again. Um, like I said, tack another fifty thousand on it. I know. No, that's why we voted it, Kevin. We know yep. that we knew. Exactly. I mean, we just. I mean, that's why we bought extra stuff. You know, for, um, you know that we've seen the same thing with the police cruisers and the ambulances and everything. It's crazy. I hear you. Okay, and then the Let's next. Have a quick Sorry, quick clarifying question on on the John Deere. I'm sorry, what model did you mention? I thought it was different than the 544H that I see on the schedule well, here. 544H is what's what's leaving, and a 930 is what's okay. coming in. Okay, thank you. Certainly. And then, uh, what are we replacing the Freightliner with? Uh, again, it should be part of that packet, um, oh, good. but it is for a 2024 Freightliner 114 SD with 42,020 GVW. Um, basically, we're getting it through the Greater uh, Boston Police um, Council so that way you can get a contract, and it's the better contract through them than it is actually through uh, the state, per se. Um, and then there's, there's actually another... Um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, organization like this um, that we pull out of Texas that we're able to jump on. And then that way it doesn't have to go to bid um, and, and it's a better price. But yeah, this, this particular one right here is the Greater Boston uh, Police Metropolitan Area Planning Council State Procurement Contract. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I remember us um, going through a, a vendor that we used 
that wouldn't require going out to bid when we talked about this last year. So that's that's helpful. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the thing that I see here uh, for 2024 is this 2014 Ford F350. Yep. Is this the sander? Um, nope, no, nope. that's, oh, that's a replacement else. truck 12, which you should have hopefully there. Um, truck 12, uh, it's a 2012, uh, excuse me, uh, 2014 F350. It's got a flatbed on it. Um, it's got a poly sander. It's a main plow truck. Uh, we saw it all through the year. Um, actually, that's the truck that I run. Um, for plowing. Uh, we use it to haul trailers for mowing, hot box. Uh, the plows, the plow is pretty whipped. Uh, the frame is bent, um, but we did have it somewhat straightened out. Uh, let's see, transmission is getting a little sketchy, um, but it's not horrible. Uh, drivetrain, obviously it's always under load, heavy load. So, you know, if we went ahead and we we pulled it so it's not being abused so bad, we could probably go ahead and, and get some um get a little bit more life out of it. So basically what they're looking at is, is the uh, truck is 50 grand, um, strobes and the radio is another 2,500. The plow is called about 1,100 and the sander is like 8,300. So for a total of 70,975 for that. Um, I would put that number three on my, um, my personal list. Uh, oh, stuff okay. that I have. And just to be clear, what are numbers one and two? Uh, number one is obviously the dump truck. Um, and number two is going to be the replacement sander for truck 10. Truck 10 is number two. Yeah, truck 10 is number two. And what was the unit for number one? Uh, it was the uh, um, it was a freight liner truck. So, oh, so, so freight liner truck is number one. Unit number my, one. my priority list. Okay. Would be uh, freight liner number one. Yep. Replacement truck sander number two, and then three and four. I don't know. I, I'd almost kind of go towards towards the John Deere, but you know, because it's already been pushed twice already. Um. But yeah, it, we can. Out of out, out of everything that's here, the, the who the two that I see are absolutely critical is the truck, the freight liner truck, and then the replacement sander, but. We'll, we'll wait till we get through replacement standard. That way, I explain why. So, is the Freightliner truck unit number four? Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, that's, that's the number one priority yes. right there. Um, okay. So, one of the one of the questions I had, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin, is if if you could look at the the monitor here yep. was. Um, let me make sure I'm on the, the right, yeah, right page here. So it looks like oh 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 so you got the whole thing. Yep. So well let me uh okay. So down right there is replacement cost as of 214.23 out of all the equipment that we're looking at between now and 2039. Yep. Now if you go to the next page, would be the proposed um Forecast of the stabilization fund based on an annual contribution of $180,000. So the green line basically shows you the funds that are available before the purchase. The blue is the estimated cost. And if, if, you, were, if you were to take $180,000 a year and put it away strictly for highway equipment, yep. you still have to go through finance, you still have to go through capital, you still have to go through town meeting. It's not just to give me, this right. is just money set off to a side. If you put $180,000 a year away, this is where you're going to be compared to like 2034, they're going to be looking at 650,000. Mm -hmm. This this year right here, we're looking at 640,000. But the next year after that, it drops down. But again, each year you push something, it changes. So now with that thought, um this same plan right here mm -hmm. we we put forth um and, and i can't take credit for this 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 is chuck is the one that put this together my maintenance foreman mm -hmm. um he did an absolutely phenomenal job with it um and you got to give credit where credit's due so long story short is is we came back 
seven years ago, and we said, if you give us $115,000 a year, we would have been able to do the same thing. Seven years later, now instead of 115,000, now it's 180,000 right. because we were lost, we lost seven years. Um, that being said, again, this is just something bringing forward so that way people are aware of it. You know, we thought about trying to go ahead and, and, and so that way we collectively at the highway can tell the town, this is what we're going to need for the next 30 years. And it's easy for us for the most part is because pickups are 10, most equipment is 20, 25, depending on what it is. So you, you can get a baseline all the way across. So it's, it's fairly easy for us. That's why when, when they asked for a five year, we're like, we'll give you 30. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, it's, and again, it's, it's not that we're trying to be cocky. It was just because it was easy. So that way we gave the town a full blown spectrum of, of exactly where, where we're at and where we would need to be. Um, but again, you know, some of these prices were based on, on 2024 prices. Yeah. Back then when we did it, I think it was based on 2015 uh, okay. pricing. So, which, which I think would, would still, I, I'd love to be able to say that the original plan would have been perfect. And we never, because originally we said, if we stick with this plan going in the thought process of a 20% increase each year, um, we'll never come back and ask for any money for the next 30 years. But unfortunately, A, we didn't, we didn't do it. And two, um, some of the prices went up more than 20% a year. Right. Depending on depending on which one it was, um, but at least this right here gives you a pretty good ballpark idea of where you're at if you were to go ahead and try and pull this plan. Um, okay. Again, the blue the blue is the blue is the cost of the equipment, and the green is if you were to put one hundred eighty thousand in each year, where you would be. Um, so does this? It, it says at the bottom here estimate. 15 to 25 percent or cost escalations built into this or, or is this uh, cost estimates it, you mean i mean right now trucks are going up 28 to 30 percent you know but yeah. is that going to continue like that over the next 28 years i honestly don't know yeah god i hope not well i guess what i'm asking is like where, where it says estimate 15 to 25 percent at the bottom are, are we to, to add add to correct add to it for yeah. each of these data points okay correct okay i see um, well, I mean, I, I can say just kind of looking at this, like if there's a way we can flatten this out, it might no be an easier pill to swallow that. And I think that Casey, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think we've contributed anything over the last two years into the capital stabilization fund. Have we, haven't we drawn from it? We've withdrawn once, but we haven't added anything. I think once, right, Carolyn? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, be, I believe yeah. so. I it's it's hard to say. I mean, we got money in there right now, um, but we haven't done anything. In the last, I mean, our free cash. This is when we had more free cash. We haven't had enough free cash to add anything lately. Right. That's been that's been the issue. Is paying for capital projects out of free cash means we don't have the free cash to put in the capital stabilization yeah. budget or account. You know, but it, the other side of the coin is if you go ahead and just look at just the blue lines on that. Yep. You know, if, if you were to go ahead and run just the blue lines, that's what you're going to be looking at for each year. Yeah. So, so it all really, you know, because like 28 and 29, there's nothing. Um, you know, and then fortunately, like 30 is only 60,000, you know, and 31 is 50,000. Again, you know, depending on what pricing goes, then it goes up a little bit. And then in 2034, you get slammed again. There's another 650,000. So take another, well, let's see, 2034. Um, we're in 2024. So go ahead and add uh, 10, 250% on, well, we on top of that. We didn't, yeah, we didn't add to the stabilization fund because we didn't have free cash. And because of COVID, we had a, a certain amount of expenses that were pretty crazy. So so um, this is just something we I just wanted just to share yeah. since you had it. You could look at no, it. I mean, you know, I and, and, really and, appreciate it. Yeah. And and chew on it. So that way, you know, you, you get an idea on on you know, we're we're trying to look forward and trying to prepare the town for what the costs are going to be for the equipment in coming years. It's probably the easiest way of saying it. You know, it's nothing that we're that we're saying, obviously, you know, uh, I'd like to see something done, something like that. 
Um, but again, you know, if the funds aren't there, the funds aren't there. So it is what it is and you move forward. But the idea is to be pre-planning, Kevin. So right. Right. And that's um, that's basically very appreciative of this so that we can get an idea of what we should be doing. Yeah. Whether we can do it or not, but at least we should be doing it. That's exactly what we do with the fire department. I'm one of the prudential committee members, you know, I've been on the department forever. And when we moved from the old from the old fire station to the new fire station, the first thing we did was, you know what, we're gonna need a roof and we're gonna need a we're gonna need a new parking lot at some point in time. Started putting money away for it. Um, you know, right now, you know, every, every time a truck is paid off, we're basically buying another truck because it, there's that seven year or seven, seven equipment turnover. So it it's it's and if anybody's noticed any of our tax rates, they've only been moving like maybe a penny. And and when it came time, because we again we thought far enough ahead that when it came time for the roof and when it came time for the for the parking lot, it was here's a check. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Um, but again, that was 25 years worth of pre-planning. I see. So assuming that we pick we we keep up with this, you know, we're looking at 2025 through 2028. Um could you take us through the there's nothing for 2028 that I can see? It looks like on the correct, yeah. 20, 29 are empty. Is it yeah. back? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, oh, I can I can share. I wasn't sure if you put it back up again. Yep. I can Is that right there? It just you, gives you a real quick idea on on the thought of uh, what years we're looking at and how much for each year. Yeah. So if we could look back at this, yep. <clears throat> what do we have for uh 2025? 2025, you've got the hot box, uh ballpark about 50,000. You got the roller for about 40,000 uh for 2025. Uh 2026. So this Honda Wacker Newson or Yep, that's a roller. That's a roller. Yep. Oh, sorry, that's a Honda engine. So it's a Wacker Wacker Newson roller. Okay. Correct. Um, and then 2020, you were looking to go up to 28, right? 2028, yeah. 20, okay, so, so I guess, 2026, yeah. um, we have um, truck six, which is a 2017 F550, and that's going to be about 125,000. And what's its primary use? Uh, primary use is it's it's a it's a small dump truck. Um, again, plowing, sanding, um, side work. Um, up stuff on the side of the road i mean just about any piece of equipment you're looking for mm -hmm. like when it comes to the pickups and stuff like that anytime during the day you'll be hard pressed to find something to drive to the point that before i got my new truck yep. i was coming here to town hall in one of the freight liners that was that was my quote unquote grocery getter okay. so um yeah so that'd be the 550 and that's basically what we we um we use it for everything um, the one after that would be truck 13, uh, which is a 2016 F350, which is basically the, the sister truck to truck 12, the one we're looking at replacing. Um, that one, we would not be looking for a Sandra Bonnie on that one because that has, presently right now we're using a stainless steel uh, slide in. And the reason why we went with the stainless steel compared to the standard steel is now this is the this will be the second truck this will be the third truck that we've been able to put this sander into if we went the cheap way you know because i try not to be penny wise and dollar foolish um we would have had to have replaced the old sander at least once um and we'd be looking at looking at it again by the time you come up to 26. so the primary use for this one would also be for plowing plowing uh plowing sanding um any roadside work tree work um going out potholes towing things um yeah it's it's mowing uh towing the mowers or the trailer for the mowers uh let's see what else i think it, it's again it's busy all day long all right and then we get up to the freight liner in 2027 yep so that's a truck uh it's a 2007 freight liner um, again, you know, it's just like uh, truck four that we're replacing. You know, it's used for plowing, it's used for sanding. Um, the thing that we're that we utilize that we're doing now, and, and it'll be a little bit more of an explanation because we really didn't talk about the replacement sander. Oh, okay. For, for truck ten, but to give you just sweet, we'll keep running down through. But to give you an idea, of what we're doing now is, is is before the thought process is well, 
well, let's, let's buy a cheap body and we'll just keep throwing the sander in and, and you utilizing the sander. Um, the problem is, is now you've got a second piece of equipment that really is, is I shouldn't say not designed for it. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, but it gets beat a lot faster. So we, what, now what we do is, is we're trying to change over all of our trucks over to what they call a combination body. So it's one body does all. We're not taking bodies off and putting sanding, bod or sanding bodies back on. Um, this truck 10, which is the one that's going to be due in 2034, um, that body that's on there will be able to be pulled off. So all you'll have to do is buy a cabin chassis. So we're, again, we're trying to look forward because it's a little bit, it'll be much cheaper now to go ahead and do that, which we did compared to what a new body would be in 2034. So again, we, we try and look forward into, you know, not being penny wise and all the foolish, but, but the other side of the coin is, 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 you know, not being, you know, I'm looking for the gold plated stuff by any means, you know, we, we, we ask for what we need to get our jobs done. And, um, and again, once we talk about the sanding body on truck number 12, 10, that'll all kind of all come together. Um, so yes, so, so you would have the freight liner um on that year which is utilized what we just talked about and then the um john deere um 5100m it's a tractor um we utilize that for loading we use that for mowing we use that for um picking up stuff on the side of the road when we're not using a, a larger loader um so that's pretty much what we utilize that for and that brings us up to 27 and then 28 and 29, um, we don't have any replacements. But obviously, um, you know, everything here works on paper. But, you know, we've already, like I said, we've already pushed the loader two years. And I can guarantee you, you're going to push at least two of these items. Um, so there's another 70, um, three, seven, four, 400,000 roughly, I know is going to get pushed at the very least. So now that right there starts jumping down. Yep. So, you know, so everything, and, you know, you, you, I don't want, I don't want to play the game of, oh, well, we're really not going to do it now. And we know we're not going to do it. So why don't we go ahead and say, well, we'll just go ahead and just change it for two more years down the road. I, I don't want to do that. It, what I personally want to see is I want to be able to show when it was due for replacement, you know, so that way somebody coming in new goes, oh, well, it's only due this year. Uh, no, it was due like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the reason why, I, you know, I could change this around, but I prefer not to. Just for the simple fact is it, it it keeps it whole. Everybody is definitely understanding where, when I'm needing replacements. So for these uh, trucks that we're replacing, how, how many people plow for the town? Um. Brian runs the loader. Brian runs the pickup. What do you call it? Runs a pickup. You've got four, five, six. Should be six dump trucks. And when they and when they go down, we know it. It's gonna be seven trucks. So there's seven trucks. There's seven dump trucks, and there's eight of us. And there's eight eight, eight people. Okay, correct. Um, Kevin, what do we do? I mean, you have if one of these vehicles breaks, what what happens? I mean, do we well, have some kind of backup? Um, kind of. Um, pickup truck wise, not really. Well, I, I shouldn't. Well, no. It depends on the storm. It depends on what we're utilizing. Um. If I lost a big truck, if a big truck went down, it's going to hurt. You know, um, could I go ahead and get creative after that and move some things around? I might be able to get another truck on the road, but it would not it would not be instantaneous by any means. You know, that's one of the advantages right. we have about the, the the like the truck twelve that we're looking at replacing. You know, and truck thirteen is is within a year of each other. Um, one of those pickups is is parked during plowing, which again, has come to our advantage because the truck I've driven 12 
has broken before and I just jump into 13 and go out and we just continue doing what we need to do. Okay. And then um, what's the difference between uh, the John Deere Unit 57, this 544H loader and the- one's, one, one's, a, one's a loader and one's a tractor. So, oh, so, oh, so, gotcha. so, ima okay. so imagine that the 5100 more of like a, a farmer's tractor. Okay. Is, is more of what it would look like. I see. And then what, what do we mow with this one? The 50. We 50 side hundred? mow the sides of the roads, uh, the transfer station, um, you know, roadside mowing. Realistically, I, I could use two people outside of the highway department. And I could utilize them all summer, just roadside mowing. Hmm. So let me just turn this down in case somebody calls because it's going to be ugly. And what do we mow the cemeteries with? Uh, cemeteries, we put, use those with the uh, um, zero turns. Okay, zero turns with those. And weed whackers and push mowers. Um, any questions from the committee on the projected capital plan? No, I, I, I think we have to just go through and see what we can do, you know, right. prioritizing, but we don't really, I feel like because of the amount of money that we're saving and we have already provisionally voted, I, I think we have to say the freight liner is number one and, um, but I can, definitely see how the loader is going to be is really critically important to Kevin's operation. So but that's actually number three right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've, I've got I've got another fifty five thousand dollar one that we really haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Um, but so you're you feel, Kevin, that your Ford F three fifty is your number two choice? No. No, 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 no. My number two choice is the one we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, I I thought we okay. had the freight liner is number one. Number two Correct. is the sanding body that we have to talk about. Correct. And then number three, you said would be the, be the uh, loader. Yeah, I mean the, the loader would be the loader would be the preferable. Um, oh, okay. obviously, so I, I had the but, but I had obviously the, that that's two hundred fifty five thousand. And if there was between the two, you know, the, the pickup truck is a third of the cost. You know, okay. so if I'm going to get something, then I would definitely probably be able to get the the truck before the before the loader, you know, but realistically, uh, operational wise, I would rather have the loader first, but I'm also trying to be a realist too. So, so for the loader, yeah, but you shouldn't, Kevin, you should, I, I don't want you to tell us, you know, realistically or whatever. I want you to tell us from an operational point of view, what go over your oh, operational operational would be the, would be the truck would be the sander would be the loader and, uh, the pickup truck. Okay. Yeah. That was going to be the, yep. basically the next thing I, I would say is, you know, cost aside, you know, what, yeah, cost aside, that would be the direction I go in. But I, again, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to think of, yeah, but no, but you got to tell us got, what, what your I, what I, is. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So loader would be number three and then the pickup would be number four. Um, obviously the, the truck, the one we've already talked about, that's number one. Okay. Um, so your yeah. sander. Yeah. The truck or the uh, um, truck number 10 sander body. You, Sander body is the one. Okay. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, back when truck 10 was ordered and back in 2014, it was ordered with a standard uh, steel dump body with the intent to purchase a new slide end sander the following year. Well, needless to say, uh, the new sander never happened. And we're running off of an older sander from 2004. It was modified to fit the frame uh, only to get us by because this is actually the body has to be removed from the truck. Um, every year, and then the sander body goes ahead and gets put on, which basically means unless I'm sanding with the truck or, or treating the roads uh, between October and mid-April, um, the truck is useless to me besides plowing and sanding because I, it takes so long to change the body over. You know, you're talking probably at least a day um, to go ahead and change them over. Uh, the sander body is the one that's there right now um, that we're pre presently using. It's beat. It's definitely it's seen more than it's 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 twenty years old, which is unheard of for a, an older body like or older sander like this. 
Um, one of the major problems that we're having is, is more of a safety issue because with the stainless steel body that we're proposing, there's enough weight in the back of the truck. So that way the back end isn't so squirrely. But when the sander body is empty, um, we've had to pull him out a few times. He's had, I don't want to say close calls, but it's, 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 it's unsafe. Um, you know, one, the safety aspect, I'm looking at it because changing over and, and putting a, a newer body on this and all season and getting rid of the other sander is, is light years apart from where we are right now. Um, again, then we can also utilize a truck for anything we need to, you know, in, during throughout the year. Um, so we're not, we're not pushed down into that. And then the third part is, is, is if we were to keep that existing sander come, come springtime, you're going to be dropping, let's see, gearboxes, hydraulic motors, shafts, sprockets, bearings, chains. Um, let's see what else is in there. The, the braces all have to be reworked. Um, again, long story short, uh, it's throwing a, a ballpark number at it, 20 grand plus, um, to rehab that one to be utilized that's already um, 20 years old. Now, just so you're aware, how should I do this? So every most people that have been to the transfer station have seen the truck that's sitting there. That is that is truck 95. So when the new truck comes in, then truck four would be going to the transfer station, 95 would be down the road. With that said, if we go ahead and we change out this existing body for truck 10 that we're talking about, then that truck body would go on to truck number four that would go to the transfer station. The body on truck four is sketchy, um, but you go ahead and you move this over to that truck, the steel body, that would be perfect because they're not willing to give a squat for this like $5,500 for a trade-in. Um, I'd probably go to Kramer's and get more than, than that at that point. So I just try to be completely um, transparent. So it could st stick with me because it's a little confusing. So the body from truck 10, if it was replaced, would go on to truck number four. Mm -hmm. Truck number four with the new body would go to the transfer station to replace what's existing there, which is the truck number 95, which if you look at it, you can definitely tell it's 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 well past its useful life for highway, even for the transfer station. Um, and then the body that is on the existing number four would probably just go to scrap. So that's how that would kind of fall down into place. But this right here, you know, um, I, I claim this is number two because because of the issues that we've had. Um, you know, I I've driven the truck before in in up on upper road, lower road, and then once it, once we start losing the load on it, it gets kind of squirrely to drive. Um, and I really prefer not to smash a truck, preferably. I think we'd prefer that too. Yeah. You know, we've been, we've been, knock on wood, we've been very lucky. You know, but I think also part of our luck is, you know, we, we think a little bit forward too, you know, because my understanding is one point in time, one of the trucks was coming down stage road, lost it, and, and, and he hit pole or hit the tree and totaled the truck. Um, but that was a large dump truck. So no large dump trucks go up on um, stage in the wintertime. So you just <laughs> protocol. Sometimes you got to think outside the box a little bit to make everything work, but and that's basically what I got. Okay. Sidewalk engineering would be great. Um, and I believe so I put great. that one through after I talked to Kevin because, um, because that's the one that we have a section of uh, North Main Street that we wanted to do a sidewalk, but it became apparent um during another project evaluation that we were going to need um didn't we send complex information uh, in order to actually get that done we were going to need engineering we had a grant that didn't pay for engineering but we may have to change that project so right now i put a prop put a pause on that i did want to make sure side 
I thought we set aside money for sidewalks already. Uh, this is yeah, a separate project to go from from the um, school north on the west side. Oh, adding okay. Nine, adding 900 feet to the sidewalk that does oh, not okay, exist. Kevin. Okay, I understand that now. Cool. So, and sidewalks this year where um, the RFP is just about put together. It's going to be going on here fairly shortly. Um, the plan is, is, is we will be removing the sidewalk and the RFP is for someone to come in and level it, compact it, and then pave it. And that's, okay. and that's basically from Conway Street North. So it would go all the way to the school on the west side and go all the way to Jackson Road on the east side. And it would, and that would also include a new section to go from right there at Bloody Brook Corner where there's where the sidewalk just stops and disappears. The yeah. sidewalk would the sidewalk we would make sure get constructed so it goes through the through that little common and connects to the other instead of randomly having you walk in the road. Hmm. Okay. That's so that good. that's that's like I said, that's just about ready to go out to RFP. All right. That's the safety issue. So that's good. Okay. I'm all right. I don't any have any more questions. First. Anything else for Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Cool. I hope you get a nap in before yeah, you well, have that's, to go. That's wow. Right where I'm going. Crib and Teddy. Yep. All right. Um, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Appreciate thank you very much for coming in. No, not wrong. Thanks for everything you guys do. You know, it's kind of a thankless job. <laughs> it really Thanks, out, I mean, you know, bet between everything that everybody does, you know, the volunteering work and the home areas, nobody gives anybody any credit for it. You know, I mean, you know, uh, am I getting paid right now? No, because I'm salary. But the bottom line is, is, is you're here. You're not getting paid. Everybody else is over here. Then nobody there is getting paid. Um, you know, Casey, she's certainly not getting paid. Um, <laughs> and, but again, you know, you could, any any of the the boards that are out there um thank you so thank you cool appreciate it all right thank you much have a great night thanks kev everything will be good be safe tonight kevin thank uh, you thank you all right so um we have um another another meeting coming up thursday um does anyone want to make any motions now, or do we want to wait until Thursday after digesting some of this stuff? Um, I, I'd i like to talk more about the overall before we start sure. making motions, I yeah, guess. I, yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think last year, I think what we did was we prioritized health and safety, and, and that sort of came first, and then afterwards whatever else yep yeah I that I, made... so that's I still actually think... in the bottom of your schedule so the priorities um the way the he had it set up was pre-approved or pre-funded projects were the first priority safety and health was priority two operational importance or to prevent further damage was three and proactive priorities was number four I, I don't really have, I mean, I feel very comfortable with that, keeping that Same. in the sense that <clears throat> it makes logical sense. Um, I, I We should, probably should discuss this every year, but I do feel comfortable with that. And I, and I think, so we need to look at everything in the, in the pot at once and say, well, you know, this is, this is how we feel about it. And then so I don't one thing that I would say, and we won't be able to get it until after tomorrow is I think a new um, revenue and or a new budget reports coming out that will show revenue, I think will show revenues and um, budget totals as of now, we had a preliminary budget, uh, our preliminary cherry sheet come out from the governor end of last week 
So Brenda's updated those numbers. She wants to go through it with the finance committee. So I should be able to get it to you, hopefully by Wednesday morning in an email. Um, that way, the discussion, you'll have more of an idea of what we have in funding sources. Um, one thing that we could consider is, I'm going to use the wrong description, but it's the words are just there to sort of give you an idea of how it works. Sort of a rolling borrowing for capital projects, and we could actually focus it strictly on equipment. Um, I don't know if everybody recalls, but in 2019 at the annual town meeting, I was just looking at this, Carolyn, um, Frontier did a capital debt exclusion that all four towns had to approve for 1.8 million so that they could do certain projects and it was a 10 year capital schedule. Um, so as they, as they complete projects, those projects roll off that schedule and the, the projects that are further down their priority list then roll onto it. So it's your 10 year rolling borrowing. Um, and I went back and I looked at the, I haven't talked to Darius about it, but I went back and I looked at the annual town meeting um, guide to see what, how that was sort of funded and structured. And I look back at their capital list as well. So it's something we could consider having a more in-depth conversation if you wanted to. Um, other than that, I mean, free cash is going to be really, really tight if there's any at all. Yep. Yeah. I see your face, Carolyn. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> Always the bearer of bad news. <laughs> no, it's just depressing because we balance our budget with free cash. So and that's part of the cash, issue. I, think. I mean, because we've consistently been conservative, so we've generated between a million and two. In the last couple of years, we've been right around a million, and that really has been hard. And so, if we're less than a million, that's going to be. I don't know. Well, to some extent, the tightness of the budget. Feeds, feeds or doesn't feed free cash. And so keeping things very conservative and tight when we know we have things that should be addressed differently makes it difficult for us to, for free cash to actually build. Oh, no. One of the major things is we pay for South County EMS out of free cash and that's a huge chunk of money now. Yeah, that's gonna be a huge hit this year. Well, that's why we got to figure out what we're going to do. So, okay. So the sooner we can get something, this is one of the things Mark and I had talked about before our first meeting, the sooner we can develop the priorities and um, have a list ready for the select board and finance committee to look at, I think the better off we're going to be in terms of planning because, you know, you have that truck that was conditionally approved and you have the school stuff. The, the three items for the school. I just got um, FCTS's capital. And so I have to talk to Brenda about that because um, we didn't have that information before she asked me about it earlier today. So I sent Russ an email and asked Carolyn. Russ is the yeah. um, superintendent over at Franklin County Tech. Yeah. They're pro the problem is there's so many towns that we we don't really have any I think the tech yeah, is pretty uh, much we have the oh. assessment, but the tech cost for Deerfield's like 17,000. I want to talk to Brenda about it before I say anything else. Hopefully I'll have more information on. But part of that is just the number of students. So mm -hmm. not much. It depends do. on where we fall with the number of students. Right. Um, I think. I think Thursday might be a little early for us to start putting our priorities together, but certainly by Monday is the meeting, Mar March 6th, I, I think we'd have enough information. So Chuck's not going to be at Thursday, so maybe, um, yeah, maybe Monday we start. Maybe we could prioritize how, how Monday. Oh, oh, Chuck, you're not going to be able to make Thursday? He's not lost. Thursday, but the other meeting scheduled. Oh, Monday? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, Monday. Chuck. So, so Monday, let's, Monday will be Monday will be there. Thursday's the only day. The second is the only one that I'm not able to. Okay. Uh, so, yep. so so let's put off the prioritization until Monday. 
Okay. Yeah. So that Chuck yeah. can participate and, and let's get some, whatever information that we think we need um, for Monday's discussion, try to get that for Thursday or, or at least outline it for Thursday. So we have all our information together for Monday. Um, I don't think it's going to take us that wicked long to, to prioritize stuff because especially if it's based on safety and health and you know operational priorities it's okay. pretty clear so well, that's the thing that's why and i'll send in so i was trying to keep track of how that discussion was going um i'll talk to mark quickly to make sure my notes are right i can send an updated schedule um i do have to confirm a time for for Chief Smith to come in from South County EMS. So I'm going to send another email. He and I had one email exchange and then I something came up and I haven't been able to uh, reconnect with him. So I'm going to do that right after we Well, I can week. talk a little bit about that. If we have time, I can just give an update for people. Sure. Um, what we have been putting money aside for the ambulance you know, 50,000 a year. So we have 250,000 set aside for the ambulance. Mm -hmm. However, the cost of ambulances have gone up to 375,000 in this past year from our 250 estimate. <laughs> so we're a little short, like, you know, 115,000 short. So we are trying to figure out what to do, but it's not a huge deal because it's like 24 month wait list if we vote for an ambulance and right this year, it's 24 months out before you're gonna get the ambulance. So one of the things that was a huge concern is the car cardiac monitors. So we as, um, well, not me, I'm just, I'm not a counting vote, but the board of oversight decided that we should buy three cardiac monitors for our ambulances because, um, it's 18 to 24 month wait for the monitors. They're at eight years of a 10 year lifespan. And once a cardiac monitor goes up, you know, no longer works, you are no longer a um, advanced level um, ambulance. You can't bill as a paramedic level, even though we have paramedic staff. And not to mention the fact that we are not going to be able to save um, our residents' lives. So we voted as the oversight board to purchase, use our money, which is short for the ambulance anyway, towards a, the monitor, monitors, cardiac monitors. So we are on the 2023 list of capital improvement. We voted to go ahead and do that. So we're waiting in line 18th to 24 month line. So that's one of the things that Zach would or Zoe would be bringing before us is talk about the cardiac monitors. And in that time frame, that Denise was in the meeting with Scott Soares from um, the USDA's rural development, and they apparently have money for ambulances. Yeah. They well, used apparently. up their money this year. So we're going to get in line for next year. Yeah. So we're trying and, to get in line for next year. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. I still don't know if there's a ton of money. I mean, you know, we should talk to Tim about that because we were on, we were on the meeting with, um, oh God, who's our local, begins with an L, the local um, USDA. And, oh, um, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know, Jim McGovern made it sound a lot more attractive than it really is as far as any kind of grant funding. I don't know. And I think there was more funding because of COVID. But there's safety. more funding because of IRA, you know, the okay. uh, Inflation Reduction well, Act. They're getting some extra funding. My my understanding is that there is another pot of money coming into that for, the so. next, for this next year. So that's why we actually have to get the... Um, application so that we're in line and then we get the grant and then we are in line for potentially two years out for an ambulance so that would, would be great still, 
Would we still order it to lock in the price, or would we would we hold That's off? That's what I was just going to ask Chuck. Do we have to decide we need to that conditional approval, like we did with Highway DPW. Yep. And and whether we get USDA or we end up paying for it ourselves, the idea is, you know, do we? We've already the boo has already gotten in line for the cardiac monitors, which we then will either support or not support, but seems like that is important purchase right now. And we had the money in the bank if, if when our turn comes up, but we don't have enough money for the ambulance and we have to decide, do we get in line and worry about trying to finance it within the two year period or not? So that is basically what our decision has to be. Okay. Um, I think we can get, a because of the IRA money, I think there will be money for us to get a grant and that is worth the risk of standing in line because there's a line. So if we get to the front of the line and we don't have the money, we can make a decision not to buy it. All it is is just a right. commitment that we're in line. So that's, <laughs> that's what we did with the DPW truck last year. Yeah, we're just in line. And then that's what we did with the monitors. We're just in line now. Okay. Uh, it's so not like if it's not going to come that. out this year, that actually saves us some pain. It's not coming out this year. It's yeah. 18 to 24 month wait list okay. for the cardiac. Okay. And what we're concerned is that we're already at year eight. They only have 10 year lifespan. Yeah. And so it seemed like it behooved us to get in line. And then, yeah. you know, if when we in next next year 18 months or 24 months from now if we don't want the monitors there's plenty of people behind us that do so again well, it's not a huge commitment but it seemed like yeah. the smart thing to do the, sounds like the, the monitors are more of the priority than the ambulance well that's yeah. what we felt okay. we had a lot of discussion of that and not only are we then not an uh event als advanced life service where we can't bill paramedic we would actually lose revenue and even though we're paying for paramedics, but we can't save our residents' lives because you need that car cardiac monitors on the on the ambulance to save people. So sort of was like, really this guess there's really not a decision here. We didn't, we better get in line. So that's basically what the discussion was. And but the ambulance we because we had the money the hundred fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars a unit had gone up um double what what it was when we paid for them before so it made sense we had the money already we had 250 and it's 150. the ambulance was a different story we can still commit and get in line and try to figure out how we're going to pay for it but you know that was a a decision that we were just going to pass off to the the CIPC to recommend one way or the other. But the monitors seem to make right seem to be like, wow, we just can't we can't not do it, really, I guess. Mark, can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Um so maybe maybe it would be a good idea, because I remember Skip asked me to have chief smith come in i i just sent an email back um sort of if that's the the approach um maybe we see if we if we can have like half an hour of chief smith's time and because monday don't forget monday's like the short meeting because monday is a planning board meeting so we lose denise at six like 625. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll be I'll be a town hall. I'll do the CIPC at town hall because I've got to be there anyway. So. Yeah, we'll probably do that in the small in the conference room. Um, okay. So I just I mean, I think from the way Carolyn's explained it, I get it. But if yeah. Skip's going to keep asking that question, maybe it just makes sense to just schedule I, I mean, it. I, I having Zach I mean, or Zoe, explain it. I think it's it fine. It should only take 15 minutes. Yeah, it should only happening. take about 15 minutes. No, actually, I, I think we should get in the way the of our guys is, prioritizing. Right. The decision is for us, do we want to say get in line for the ambulance, really? 
Yeah. I, I, well, I, that's, I, I think so. Um, yeah, but, yeah, that's sort of a no-brainer. Yeah. But but we're getting in line knowing we don't have the money in the bank. Right, the right. the cardiac monitors were different. We we had the that's cash right. and we get in line. It's still okay. not going to be purchased for a while, but we did have yeah. the cash. But I, but I feel pretty strongly that everybody's scrounging around and we're going to try to figure out how we can afford um, the ambulance and that it's worth getting in line and we just keep pursuing grants and stuff like that. I mean, we there should, are a couple of different ones that we are hoping to get. We should also ask if we still need three ambulances. Well, the, the, the third ambulance is really is pretty i mean that's the one that is a back backup i know but it's still got heart monitor the yes spread, yes the, but that monitor can be transferred to the new ambulance oh, too no. um to forever i know i'm just you know wondering i just didn't open a select board meeting you probably should oh yes no. that's Not right oh, i just yeah we're oh, we're yeah. we're ending now anyway aren't we um please look at that yeah. I, I I actually have to go at six thirty for a three fiftieth so meeting. Yeah, so. I have to go eat. Does anyone? <laughs> have, yeah, so we'll, we'll just treat dinner. That, we'll just treat that as pub, public comment. Um, but okay, uh, it is have a, public comment. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, it sounds like we might have a potential motion to adjourn. <laughs> um, I make a motion to adjourn. I'm, I'm second that. Oh, but before we before we vote to adjourn, so Thursday, because Chuck's not going to be here. So all we're going to do, what are we doing for Thursday? We're just collecting more information so that we can prioritize on Monday when Chuck is here, right? Yeah, actually, with that said, um, if, if we're not going to get scams in, should we just cancel Thursday? That's what I was thinking. So let me see what Chief Smith says, and I will shoot an email out. It's a scheduling email. So that's the that's the thing you guys can talk about in email. Um, so I will send a scheduling email out as soon as I hear back from Chief Smith. How's that? And then you can cancel up to right before that meeting. Okay. okay. I'm sure a lot of people here would be upset about that, but we can always cancel. That's <laughs> like, woohoo! <laughs> not gonna miss anything yep. all right do you have a motion on the floor mark we do that was the discussion portion so um yeah uh i guess uh we have to do this uh hybrid so uh i'll start with uh, uh a roll call here so denise mason yes carolyn shores ness yes doc shattuck yes mark brennan yes all right you're adjourned oh.